Welcome to Burning Metal Truth in the Breeze, episode 16. In this episode, I'm joined by Derek Kenny of Sweat Count. How are things, man? Great. Thanks for having us. No bother. We'll get straight into it. You played a gig. Oh, we did. It was the second gig in nearly two years, and it was absolutely brilliant. It was great to be back. Yeah, in London, too, of all places. Like all Yeah, you were in Leeds, like I think, the, the day before, wasn't it? Sorry? Damnation. You were in Leeds. I was. Oh, brilliant. I've seen the t-shirt. Yeah. I wanted to go for that. I was trying to get tickets, but they sold out like that. <laughs> I got one, I got one that, uh, like for the week the week of the festival for 30 quid. Oh, God. Yeah, there were, at the last Excellent. minute you could get tickets for like 25, 30 pounds because people were selling for a variety of reasons and they just put them up oh. in ticket swap and you could get them for fucking half nothing. Oh, now I know. Ah, <laughs> oh, but you're looking, man. You had booked to go over to London with the band anyway, exactly. so it probably would have been very difficult. Wreck. It's probably for the for the best in the long one. <laughs> ah, I wouldn't say it probably for the best, man. Jesus, man, carcass like him. Oh, the only gig of the year, wasn't it? Yeah, carcass, uh, fucking god flesh. Uh, urn, urn, urn. Well, well. I love urn. They should be a lot more better known. Party Cannon were there. They're coming over now in a couple of weeks, Daryl. Oh, They're nice, playing nice. Social and uh, Voodoo in Belfast. So, oh, very good. And Gamma Bomb, of course. Yeah, great lads. They're great. They're really they were they were one of the best bands at Damnation. Yeah. No, uh, they're they put on a great show. And half like near, near towards the end they put out the come out in the big suit, the big sea savage suit. Yeah. They're jumping around the stage. It's brilliant. They got a video that actually it's fantastic. Yeah, well you were supporting them, uh, Gamma Bomb. When you were when you were when yeah. they were playing, did they do all the whole skit with the monster and everything and all Yeah, that toward, that was towards the end, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I just yeah. went in, back into the the kind of backstage area just to get a beer or something and i don't open the door like what did i just walk in <laughs> huge big guy I'm just putting on the head <laughs> yeah. were they calling them a brexit here and all the rest of it and taking the piss for it with them uh not really so much it was really just kind of action as usual it was just oh, sorry, right, just, it wasn't too much kind of talking but a little, a little bit here and there but uh the soup at the end was great yes they did a lot of talking yeah uh, philly done a lot of talking at damnation so he did yeah. He brought oh, out a uh, monster and he said he was a Brexiteer and all the rest and he believed oh. the fucking... I might have been at the bar for a bit of it, but it was, most of what I said, it was just non-stop, yeah. non-stop action. And of course, did they play at OCP when you were there, yeah? They did, yes. I remember the whole uh, the Robocop skit. It was, that was pretty good, yeah. yeah really good. Nee, 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 nee. I was hoping yeah. to play that. That's <laughs> the first time I've ever seen them. Oh, uh, yeah, the shotgun bit. <laughs> and as per uh, usual, so cool. there is the ice cream van. Oh, uh, yeah, I have one as well. Usually around five o'clock or so. <laughs> you can hear all the little shits run into it. Well, nobody ever goes near them, though. That's just the, it's half eight and it's fucking Sunday evening. There's no kids in the ice, street anymore. Ice cream man at half eight, Jesus. And there isn't even any kids on the street anymore. I think the oldest one is about 20 at this point, at least. <laughs> oh, he's probably selling drugs. Oh, that's what they do. It's all a front. <laughs> Hitting in the flakes. So, that was that your first gig as a three piece? No, it was the second one. The first one was uh, uh, the end of August, uh, sporting what was it? acid, acid red. Oh, that's that, was, that was the acid first game. That, was, that, that was great. I was gonna say acid age, yeah. acid rain. Um, how, was, did you, how did you swing two fucking gigs in the UK? Was it Santi organized it or how did you? Uh, yeah, we organized it through a booking agency, and then um, I think we, we stopped with that maybe during the summer just because gigs weren't really happening. So we stopped paying that. And then we still had two gigs kind of lined up. So so we did them. And then I think that's they're the only two really we have lined up. I think we have one. Yeah, I think I've, we have another one back in the UK in March, I think it is. I have to double check. But um, sometime next year, but nothing really in the foreseeable future. Yeah, still, that was pretty cool to get on to. Yeah, cool. uh, it was great. And it was great to, in, especially the, like the same venue as well, the underworld. It's just, it's so cool. It's such a lot. Nice venue. Like you walk down, you, you immediately get that the fibers kind of smell of stale kind of beer on the floor. It's just ah, oh, love it, love it. My girlfriend was there, and she was like, "Ah, oh, horrible." But you know, <laughs> when you're when you gig a lot, and you smell that smell. It's just it's home. It really hits home. Yeah, home. That's the only word you can think of. Yeah, yeah, and especially I think too, like you'd have a better chance in the better regards with the English audience because they're a lot more receptive to new music. Oh yeah, the was, like they, we got we got a really good reception. Um, the two gigs. Like there was, you'd play in, in Dublin the odd time. The, you'd be lucky if there was maybe 10 people are there and they'd be kind of sitting back and chilling out. But like these people up the front were really kind of giving it socks. So it was great, great enthusiasm. Yeah, it's a totally different mindset over there because yeah. I've been to both Bloodstock and Damnation, the first two yeah. back. 
and they were purely English lineups because that yeah. was because of all the fucking complications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still sold out both of them, and they were oh. huge Rage crowds. I, the stages they were. Rage I didn't go to Bloodstock. I uh, regret not going to go to Bloodstock. I'll probably go next year. Well, uh, the first one I was at was 2016. It was just brilliant. It was such a good crack. It's the best one of the whole lot, man. And yeah. It's so handy and so easy. And yeah. It's so nice. Everyone is so nice there. Yeah, everyone is like, I don't think I've seen one fight or. Oh, God, no. Hear any crap or anything going on. It was just everyone was. I actually remember I was uh, crowd surfing for God, Venom or something. I think it was fucking brilliant. And I remember I lost my phone. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> a nightmare. I lost my phone. I got down. That thing. I was like, I lost my phone. I lost my phone. And I was with someone, I can't remember who it was, some some English guy I just made friends there. And he's like, well, look, don't worry. You'll find it in five minutes. Went up to the, right behind the stage, the lost and found it, and it was there. Someone had just handed it in immediately. And I was like, I can't believe that. I was like, you probably would not see that here. We'll just get it stamped on or something. But I found it immediately. And I was like, everyone here is so, so nice. <clears throat> yeah, I was the same with Damnation. Uh, my cousin, I was there on the Friday night, and he fucking dropped the bank card out of his pocket because he's oh. not used to going out like people aren't. Mm. And he made the mistake of putting the fucking the, the card in with the tobacco. Oh, well, you take it back out, falls out. Yeah. But they uh, went up to the bar after a while, and there it was. So ah, that's good. Did. Yeah. Totally different fucking, totally different mindset. Yeah. It's just, well, so hopefully now, with, with the, that's a bit of a start for you in the UK. Like, maybe, hopefully, you can get more contacts over there, and maybe... Absolutely, yeah. We, we got chatting to a few people, so hopefully we'll have a few more there, and especially that venue as well. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Yeah, hopefully looking good for next year. Everything's kind of slowly getting back to normal. Yeah, when it regards to the songs, like how have you had to restructure them? Like, with, with obviously Liam left the band and he he was back in vocals and guitar, like so. How would um, not, not too much to be honest. There's a little bit of tinkering and stuff. Um, Paul's had to change a couple of little bass sections, and then some things kind of following other things that were more so on the record than we played live. So not too much kind of thing, but a little bit more, um, he's added a bit more distortion in some sections, but as far as like structural parts go, nothing's really changed. Cause it's like, you, we had to, even when we were playing some of the songs live, we had to, when Liam was still in the band, we had to cut like some section cause they were just a bit too long. Like even when we were playing the Gambon gig there, it was like, okay, you have 30 minutes. Yeah. And we're like, okay, so that's we timed it out in practice. Like, okay, that's four songs. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there was actually it was supposed to be another band opening up for us. I, I can't remember the name, but I think we were coming from the three bands, Shrapnel and Gamma Bomb with us. Mm-hmm. And we were like, oh, couldn't you know if, if it's just if we were opening up, can we go on like a little bit early and just play an extra song? We're like, yeah, no problem. So there's already a good few people there. So like, we'll, we'll go on at, at uh, ten to eight instead of eight. So we got, got to play. Five songs, so that was well, that was nice. Yeah, Going all that yeah. way and you know, get to get an extra song in. Yeah, I think coming from Italy now would have been a bit of dodgy, like you know, especially. Yeah, I think it was pretty far. Like not too bad for us. Uh, I actually, uh, I was looking into bringing all my gear on the plane, and I was looking at prices and stuff for Ryanair. But you know, like excuse me, one personal bag and then cymbals and snare and bass pedals. All in all, I think it was close to two hundred quid. Ridiculous fucking Ryanair. So I actually just rented gear there, and it was brilliant. It was uh, very handy. It's only like two stops away in the tube, so definitely do that anytime playing in England again. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, where else? Jesus, fuck! Lost me train of thought now. Shit, give me a sec. Shit, give me two seconds. Fuck. No, you're good. Oh, I've had a, a long day yesterday. Oh god, I was going to say well, something about the fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the EP you have, an, you have an EP recorded. Yeah, we've had it recorded a while now. Yeah, uh, we did the last two songs summer last year. There, we've been sitting on them for a while, uh, and we were going to record it. We we're going to release it towards the start of this year, and then Liam left, and then it was a little a few bits, so we just put it back in another little bit. So we're going to getting gearing up to release it now soon, probably towards the end of the year. Um, we just kind of finished all the credits on the album there last week. EPs are so we're kind of just putting it out there and going to be releasing it probably hopefully next sometime next month or in the next month or two. Nice uh, there's going to be three songs on it, and the EP will be called Three Faces. That's the title of the track. Of the EP. Three tracks, three faces. So I can I, yeah. I can imagine where you're going with it there. So it's, uh, the whole concept is based on the. 
was it the Japanese um, kind of folklore thing of everybody has three faces, one you show to yourself, one you show to to family and friends, and the other one is, oh God, I forget. I should know this. Uh, gone. Yeah, it's the one is one is um you show to everybody else, one you keep to yourself, and the other's gone. Blank. <laughs> That's two in a row now on the blank, so we're doing well here. But uh, <laughs> even is I'll put it up there. I brought it up here. Unfortunately, Santiago was meant to be on with us tonight, but something happened. Look at what can we yeah, do? Yeah, he, he got he got uh, distracted with some with some ah, uh, look at these things happen, man. With some work things. He's a busy boy. Yeah, we'll just put this on. Give me a second. Uh, quick cuts and all stuff like that. So it's a cool video up here soon, hopefully. There you go, Dan. Are you are you still with uh, Wormhole Death or are you going on your own? I think we're on our own now. Uh, so we're self kind of self publishing this one. Mm. So uh, it remains to be seen what will happen next year. We're still kind of looking around and seeing which direction we're going to go. But I think we're, we're just going to release this one ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, man, I don't know if the label is really. I think if you've got a good PR campaigner behind you, yeah. you're going to butt off. Like, and even that's not even exactly. effective. So a label comes in, they want like what 30, 40, maybe even more, more of a percentage. Like, yeah, would you do that if you got someone kind of who knows what they're doing and can put out the record and shop it around? At the end of the day, now, man, you're it's nearly all fucking Spotify numbers now, anyway. This yeah. physical thing is kind of really starting to die out in the last couple of years, like, yeah, yeah, that's true. And we're still, we were playing around maybe uh, releasing the new EP as a, as a, as on vinyl as well so we might be doing that next year if we make a couple couple uh might be 50 copies or something like that so we might be doing that as well maybe even cd probably vinyl more than cd because they're um or could i need to come back in the last last year I literally only got my vinyl player right there this last week oh there i got someone something similar yeah yeah i got a <coughs> last week. So i'm just starting to get back into that again now which is which is great yeah, if you're going to do a vinyl press, you'd nearly want to get the fucking order in now, though, man, the way it's gone with all the yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's gone crazy popular now. I just went into Golden Discs yesterday just to get it, just get two, just to celebrate it being back working. And uh, it's more vinyls than CDs or anything like that. It's just nearly all vinyls. It's expensive, though, man. Yeah. Yeah, I just got two yesterday. I got an Alice in Chains one. I got Foo Fighters' first album. It was like 40 quid. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to buy any more for now for a little while. <laughs> Like, I was in Tesco the other day, and I spotted Iron Maiden's new album. Mm. And it was 50 fucking quid. Oh, yeah. Jesus. 50 yeah. fucking yeah. quid, man. They're quite quite expensive. I was looking at a couple of soundtracks, a couple of game soundtracks I was looking to get. I was thinking about getting Silent Hill 2, and I, I looked it up online. The cheapest was about, what was it, 80, 90? Something ridiculous like that. It was crazy. Crazy money. Yeah, it's nice to sort of have these things as a collector, but... Yeah, physically have them, uh, well, at the minute, like you're settled at the minute now, but if you're moving about, man, if having vinyl and stuff, it's very difficult. Like, yeah, yes, it is, unfortunately. Like, you know, I have an almighty amount of fucking stuff here. Like, but mm. I didn't really start collecting until six years ago. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I was live, I was planning to go back, move to Dublin or Galway, either or I didn't know where I was going to yeah. go. I was, in, I was just saving money again to move off. Then I became a carer, and then I was like, well, for. Mm. I can start getting the stuff now because I ain't going anywhere. So oh, stop! I've I've moved twice in the last year, and it's just you have no idea how much much stuff you have until you try and move it all. It's can be quite stressful, but then it's good as well. On on the other hand, like you get rid of a lot of crap you you didn't want and need, and you don't really uh, have room for. So it's it's a good kind of spring cleaning kind of excuse as well as well. So we'll touch on Liam. Liam has Liam got his own new project now. No, it's, uh, Liam's just kind of into painting now, really, which I completely understand and respect. Like, he, uh, during lockdown, you you, know, you get a bit disheartened with playing, and like, are we going to get back at all? Are we going to get playing? And this was, fuck, this time last year. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, you get back practicing for a while, and then the government comes in, like, no, no more practice. You can't move two meters outside your front door. <laughs> and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, so... It does get very disheartening. It's like, are we going to play again? So then, and then when we start getting back, uh, the start of this year, I think like February or something, he's like, look, I'm kind of, I'm not really playing guitar much. I'm just uh, trying to focus on the painting. And I was like, that's, that's 
uh, completely understandable. Uh, and he's, I don't know if you've seen any, any of his work, but he's a, he's a brilliant painter. He does all landscapes and stuff. I got him to oh. do a picture of the, I asked him to do a picture of the lake for us and it's, it's brilliant. But like, he's just focusing on his art and that's fantastic because he's really, really good, really talented. So. Wow, so he's kind of just moving all the look in the world. As far as I know, he's not really paying much at all. He's just uh, just painting away, which is really brilliant. Yeah, yeah, you never know. He might come back to it, but he, the, the yeah, passion yeah. doesn't go away. Like, yeah, you, oh yeah, the music business is Hotel California, man. You can check out oh, anytime yeah. you like, but you don't leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very few leave. And, and if good, do, good analogy. I don't know. Is it would be now? I just I found it very unusual to be honest with you. Yeah, well, hopefully, like it's still a bit up in the air, and like the cases are going up and up every yeah, day. It's so bad. it's kind of like I was due to play a gig uh, next month with some other lads, and then that could put back, put back to March. So I don't know which way it's gonna go um, if things keep getting you know rearranged and put back and stuff. You don't want to book too many things, put all your eggs in one basket because it could just get cancelled like that so you still yeah. want to be able to do things but you don't want to put too much hope in all fortunately that's how it is in, at the moment yeah have you got your third have you got the booster yet yourself i did i got my my booster um and near, almost uh yeah it was just just two weeks ago there yeah i got it on the friday and uh, yeah i got i got the other two obviously because i've weak immune system um so i got, I got the other two and it was actually grand for them and then the third one I, the, the day after I got the third one. I was I was gonna have a Halloween party and have a few people over as a kind of housewarming thing, really. And then I woke up at five o'clock in the morning. I had like cold sweats, and I was like, "Oh no, I'm dying! I'm gonna have to cancel a party. I've never cancelled anything in my life." And oh, I thought I was gonna die. I was really sick. And then I got up and I had the had the shakes and the chills and stuff. And then I had a bath. I don't know why I had the idea to hop in the bath. And then I got out and it's grand. <laughs> I got the heat back into my bones, and then it was all right. But I wasn't right for about three days. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the arm was killing me as well, but it was weird because it was fine after the other two, but this one just fucking floored me. So, well, that's good though. I'm, I'm glad, glad I got it though. I think it's if you if you're not well from it, it kind of yeah. stands to you. Yeah, though, if you got a bad reaction, that meant you've got a lot of a fucking protection, like, yeah, and especially the, the timing actually couldn't have been better because it was exactly one week before we were going to London because me and the girlfriend yeah. went over a little bit early and just had a little, little bit of a holiday, which was great because it's been you know, two years since we. I don't like that. Yeah. So it was nice to have a little bit of normality. I remember just walking around London doing the touristy kind of things just before the gig. So mm -hmm. that's great. That's what I was actually going to touch on earlier when it asked me fucking train of thought. Were you all tested on the gigs? No. No, um, no they're, 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 I know Damnation well, um, and uh, Bloodstock had bands had to pull out. Like uh, even Green Lung only had to, pull, had to pull out of Damnation last yeah. week because they failed the test. Like, oh, fucking hell. No, it's, um, yeah, it was very shocked at how kind of casual it was mm. um like some a lot of places don't ask for uh covid id and stuff they just kind of just let you in like oh, when we went over the last time in, in august we went over in the van we decided to drive over so we put all the stuff on the back it was great in that way but uh it was mad like we had all the all the booking info for the for, for the van and all the covid certs and all that kind of stuff and we just rolled up to the gates and like uh darius anti paul yeah all right go on that was all <laughs> we had everything ready to go passports covid passports mm -hmm. everything up on your phone and already showing they were like no it's fine it's fine <laughs> i've never been asked anything i'm not asked it. it's actually funny enough it was harder to get into a restaurant in dublin than it is to enter london <laughs> it's crazy well, i don't just, know what the situation like is uh, in ireland because I, I don't really we don't really go up to town like to be honest with you but well, we just kind of come down here or i go to the other lad's house because mm. it's just cheaper and we just can't be arsed oh, yeah. but yeah the age of going to the in home, england, like every no, second day it's it's all gone <laughs> in england there was no checks anywhere for me and even in the airport and anytime any on both flights if the damnation mm. and to bloodstock never yeah. asked for the COVID pass once yeah no i th i went to a, rest a restaurant today in uh in hollywood there just outside wicklow well in wicklow and they asked for it there and i was just thinking to myself that i can't remember the last time i was asked before that, it was a good while. I should look at that. <laughs> well, just at, this point, what, at this point, it doesn't really matter, does it? Like, you know, it's... Yeah. It's, it's fucking... Like, it's it's not going anywhere. Like, and at least... 
Yeah. I know if you, you, you'll you be under the high risk category. So Yeah, think... very high risk. Yeah. So I, I, even at the gig, when everyone's just walking around uh, with no mask, I'm still wearing it like most places, but like just kind of sitting in a corner and have it off. But if you're walking to the bar, walking to the toilet, I have it on. If you're kind of walking past people, I'd always still be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because I am very high risk, but uh, still have to try and live a life as well and do things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's unfortunately, as I said there, man, this isn't going away. So it's just going to mm-hmm. be part of life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people true. are saying we can go back into lockdown again. No, we won't go back. No, lockdown back and way, no way. Oh, Try and man. do things and put on gigs and stuff. Maybe like if people want to wear masks and stuff, of course. But mm. you know, still have to try and do things. Yeah, look at it. I'm kind of glad that a lot of things have kind of been have been shelved for the winter though, because it kind of mm. might be a, maybe the best idea for a lot of people to set this winter blow over because. Mm. But they have to sort of their shit out here with the antigen testing, like because I, yeah. I brought home uh, twenty one tests for free. I was just gonna say they're free in the UK, aren't they? I got twenty one of them for free. Oh, it's crazy! And how much are they here? They're like what they're five fucking or five something? for one. Fuck off! And I heard the radio earlier they're they're trying to like subsidise them, like oh if you if you go out to the pub a lot, go to nightclub and stuff, try and do it two two times equal. Okay, well then make them like free or like really cheap. Yeah. Like they're free in London in the UK, yeah. so why are you yeah. not free here? Like, what's the crack with that? So, because bringing home my three boxes, I have twenty one of them. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh look, man, if I, I, I've I've uh, tested myself, of course, now once since I came back from England, yeah, like, yeah, I was in damnation around thousands of people, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, but I just I don't understand it, man. It's just, but I, I, I it's down to money. They're too fucking tight, man. Yeah, you're they right, give yeah. themselves big fucking raises and raise everyone's fucking taxes, but they won't. Fucking yeah. get a few antigens for people. Three things that are very important, especially with older people now, especially this winter. Like, say, if I was in a situation where gigs and everything were happening, mm. which, it, in my opinion, they probably should be because there's nothing we can mm. do at this point. Mm. But the fucking free antigen test should be there. So, say, if you were going to visit your grandmother, or say, yeah, someone, say to your situation, if you're, why don't I get people around? Mm. You just said, just take a fucking antigen test and before you yeah, come and get the results, and, like. Like that, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't tell you if you have it or not, but it tells you if you're contagious. Yeah. So as long as you know you're not contagious, you're, you're no harm you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I remember four gigs were, I remember just before gigs were allowed, and you've seen the footage of the uh, the queues to go with the coppers, like, up and around the street. And I was like, oh, that's fine. This isn't fine. Like, what, what's the fucking difference? <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one. It's probably because the, the, the government are kind of, well, the I think it's the mainstream. The people that are let's be yeah. let's be honest about it, man. The likes of myself and yourself and everyone else in the metal scene were the minority yeah. in Ireland. Oh yeah, yeah. We are the minority. Like we, we can make a lot of noise, but nobody will ever hear us. Mm. That's just the that's unfortunate just truth about it. Yeah. Well, young Mikey, uh, or uh, Mikey O'Reardon has, has yes. got a bunch of gigs coming up though in February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might might be playing one hopefully hopefully soon whenever we're. We uh, organise it. Yeah, there's a new band actually. Oh Jesus, I can't. What's the names? Shit, I can't think of their names. A new band. It'll come to you. Hmm? It'll it'll come to you. Yeah, it won't come to me. No, it's a brand new band. They haven't even released anything. They just dropped a video on them playing a rehearsal the other day. They have a real kind of entombed vibe to them. Hmm. Oh no, man, they're fucking. They're sounding pretty fucking solid. And yeah, I'll link it to me if you if you remember. I will do. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> one thing you got to give props to little Mikey is. He's a fucking great lad for getting yeah. the young lads out. Yeah, uh, Mike is a Mike is a good lad. <laughs> because you know, to be fair, like there's an awful lot of young Irish metal bands coming up again at the minute now. All of a sudden, mm. giving them shots and opportunities to play gigs and stuff. <laughs> One that's pretty good now is Hashmaker. Yeah, yeah, they're from Cork or something, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're really good. I know it's Jim from Dirty Casuals, and I don't know who else is in the band to be honest with you. But yeah. no, they're they're very good. And yeah, this is so nice stuff. So. Of course, we had the siege of Limerick, which was encouraging too. Yeah, I oh, thank God that's it's back, and that was the first one in a while, isn't it? Oh yeah, a long, long time. It would have been. Yeah, one was supposed to have been would have been the April or the Easter one in two thousand and twenty, yeah. and it would have been two thousand and nineteen before it's a, that. Hopefully, it's just a regular thing now. And who, who knows, man? Maybe you might actually play the fucking thing someday. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know about that, but hopefully, in some form or another. <laughs> I just, keep, just keep asking, you know. What can? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. And if you make a bit of noise with the EP and 
if you face out again, maybe yeah. it could be a time to go for the, the next uh, Easter one, like. Yeah, we'll push it out there and try and get as many gigs as we can. Mm -hmm. and hopefully the whole Clang thing works out as well, too, and that can... Oh, God, I forgot about that. Yeah, what about Sunstroke? Is that going to happen again? I, I don't think that's dead. Dead. Ah, uh, that was... I always thought that was a bit too good to be true. I was like, how are these, like, a lot of my favourite bands just playing in Nace, like, 10 minutes from where I live? Like, it was just too good to be true. Yeah, it's such a shame, but I can't see uh, them no. ever bringing that back now, to be honest with you. Oh, uh, you never know. Hopefully, but probably not. <laughs> They'd have lost too much money on it, man. I know. It's a terrible shame, yeah. Yeah, it's a, such a shame. But uh, I have to say now, I'm hopeful the Clang thing take, takes off, but mm. the only thing yeah. that I'd kind of be it's worried about, man, it's 70 fucking quid in, like. Yeah. What was, who was playing? Uh, oh, Coroner, uh, uh, Candlemas. Candlemas. Candlemas, yeah. That's, Green, that's Green Long. Long. Yeah, that's the other right. Spurs of I Burn are confirmed. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Risen Dread. Like, it's, it's like a fucking tough sell, man, that for 70 yeah. quid, like. Yeah, yeah, you have to see it as a little kind of festival kind of thing. Yeah, I know, man, but like damnation there. I was at damnation and it was 50 fucking pounds sterling. 50 pounds, Jesus Christ. Yeah, if you oh. got the ticket at face value. Oh, yeah, so that's really good. You can go over to damnation and you can get carcass and godflesh and paradise lost and urn and raging speedhorn, etc. Yeah. etc. Evil played that as well, I think, didn't they? Sorry, Evil played that too, as well, did they? No, yeah, yeah. There was a bunch of loads of bands. Yeah. There, I was flat out all watching right. bands all day. Oh, like, it was great. Up there. The only thing I won't miss about the like, uh, damnation and Leeds University is all the steps. Oh, and I suppose how did you get there? Where did you fly into? Oh, we flew into Leeds because I. South Florida, yeah. Yeah. Well, long story short, my mother's six brothers and sisters live in Leeds. Oh, very good. Andy That's loves it. So, oh, but, the beds but, to knock on <laughs> exactly. So, she has somewhere Excellent. to stay and she's looked after, and I can kind of go off and do my own thing, which is great. Oh, that's brilliant. That's very handy. Yeah, it's a shame it's moving out of Leeds because I won't be able to go to Damnation again now. Oh, where's, where's the next year? Though? I might be in Manchester next year. All right, that's that might be a nice excuse to go. I've never been to Manchester, so maybe I'd make the trip over. Yeah, I've got a good, fairly good bands confirmed already. Ministry are confirmed, Converge oh. are playing. Jesus, uh, yeah, they've got a fairly solid lineup on it so far. Pig Destroyer. Well, never, seen, never seen Ministry, so that'd be a great excuse. Well, there you go. It's only around 50 quid in as well, and you get a full day. Like. That's really good. Yeah, and then go over and treat it as a little little holiday. Precisely, precisely. And it's a nice kind of little end of the, thing, end of the year holiday as well, too, because mm. you've got Bloodstock, and then August, and then you've got potentially got Damnation, then November, like so. That's kind of wrapping up things more or less. Yeah, probably, yeah, pretty much. And mm. good excuse, good excuse. But uh, mm. in regards to Spec Camp, uh, what's going to be? What's your long term? Have you got a long term vision for Spec Camp? Or it's just a. I know Santiago is very into his, his classical playing, and he's he's a really really good guitarist. But oh, stop! Yeah, he's he's one of the most talented people I've ever I've ever met. Uh, long term vision, I don't. We really have one. It's just kind of keep going, business as usual, and see where where it leads us. Well, I think uh, as far as releases go, I think we we're going to we're not going to focus on kind of compilations and and EPs and full albums anymore. I suppose as, as much as um maybe releasing bi yearly singles and videos and stuff. I mm -hmm. think we we might be doing all that ourselves and not get any outside kind of video makers and stuff like that i think we're, we're done with that i think we're going to go our own way and kind of produce our own stuff because um the video we have done for three faces it's a great video and like you, you wouldn't know that we all just kind of made it ourselves like it looks like objectively i think it looks really good and so we'll hopefully be releasing that one soon and so i think we're going to keep everything really internal and just mainly just just to keep it kind of uh all our our own kind of influences and visions for uh, videos and kind of concepts and stuff like that. We keep it all ourselves rather than kind of give it to other people. We might change our mind in the future. You never know. But I think for the for the foreseeable future, at least the next year or so, we we'll just keep everything very internal. Mm. And we like the the new kind of dynamic. Just the the three of us. Like we we were talking about briefly about getting someone else. Excuse me. You know, we're like, okay, we'll just keep it the way it is. You know, it's nice and kind of chill environment uh, songwriting uh, 
stuff like that. So we're just going to keep it the way it is, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Seems if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It all got on really well. So just keep, keep going as it is. And you had, a, I remember at one point, I don't know what the situation now, you had an American booking agent sorted out. Have you just let that go or what's going on there? I think we had one or two gigs in America kind of more or less lined up before COVID happened and then that nice. second through. Well, I don't know if there, well, there's still rumblings about something happening next year, but uh, you won't know that from now for another, another little while. And then there's a couple other things uh, we'll keep secret for now. For next summer, kind of more bigger gigs kind of further seas but nothing is confirmed for the moment but well hopefully we have a couple of things in the pipeline but nothing definite at this moment that we're going to be announcing but definitely we have we've had uh, uk again in march and, hmm. uh, i'm not sure who that's where i'll have to double check but uh early enough next year back back in the uk again that's our our new second home mm-hmm. yeah the uk yeah we said it earlier, but I will say it again. I just think the UK, if you're trying to make your name as a band man, the UK yeah. is the place to go oh, because right, yeah. they will give you a, they'll give you a fucking chance, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. And is, but, but I like you or I don't here, like you. Like, yeah, I know playing here is great, but, like, you know, you've been, I've been playing the same gigs and venues since I was 16, 17, and 31 now. In various bands, I've played the same place over and over, so you want to try and play a bit more and play kind of further afield. Uh, Germany is another place we'd love to get back to because I did a tour of Germany when I was in Magalagog years ago. Yeah. And we did Germany and France for uh, 12 days, I think, with Ill Disposed. And that was probably one of the best times of my life. It was just such good crack. And, you know, new kind of city and venue every every day, staying on the bus, it was, it was brilliant. So hopefully we'd like to do something like that in the near near future kind of further afield kind of traveling mm-hmm. gigging and seeing the countryside and all cool stuff like that exactly and you spec spec can't have already played in russia haven't they yeah 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 uh we did russia russia was brilliant um god it feels like a lifetime ago uh 2018 it was uh, july that was yeah that was brilliant uh yeah we'd, uh, we were Pondering maybe going back there again, but we're we're not sure. But uh, but yeah, we're we're not entirely sure. But we we'd like to do more things like that again soon. Maybe next summer. Yeah, I think uh, if you are if you are going to make them plans for next year, you'd want to maybe yeah. just kind of let them slide out a bit longer now, just in case. Yeah, maybe. I think I think most people are kind of doing that. There, the way everything is at the moment, it's everything is getting pushed back a little, another little bit, unfortunately. Sure, look at fucking Holland is back in lockdown effectively. Oh. Don't say. Everything is closed at seven o'clock in the evening. And, uh, and in Austria now, they've passed a the fucking law. And I, I don't like this, man. I don't like this mm-hmm. at all, but they've passed a the law. But if you're unvaccinated, you're basically in lockdown. You can only go, go to work or a shop. You can't go anywhere. That's a bit extreme. That's fucking crazy, man. Uh, Australia just kind of came back from a very long, long lockdown, didn't they? Australia been fucking locked down for fucking two years, more or less at this point. God, yeah, nuts. I don't know because uh, I know, like, I personally took the fucking vaccine because I got the virus and it fucking hammered me. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. For you, don't let that happen again. To, you, you had to fucking take it. Yeah, yeah. Look, there's people out there that have their own reasons for not taking it, and like, I don't think they should be left outside in the fucking rain because they didn't want to mm. take a, what's effectively a fucking uh, a trial drug, like. Mm, yeah you know you know you have to see you have to call it let's call it 50 50 like you know it's i'm not an anti-vaxxer but this this thing like i know somebody that's involved in they're actually involved in medicine and they won't take it because they're just of the opinion like mm. it should be tested for a lot longer than it is and i that's their reasoning and yeah i think a lot of uh, yeah a lot of people didn't really mind not having it when they're during the summer when uh, when you, you couldn't go in if you didn't have it, they're sitting outside and rear mm-hmm. guards, now it's cold and everyone wants to get it so they can go inside in the warmth. <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard today now there's a vaccination centre fairly near me and apparently it was fucking packed today with 30 and 40 year olds because they're all yeah. buckling because they're like, I might just as well. go to the pub. <laughs> I can't go anywhere for the next, till next, at oh, least exactly. next March. I had to go all the way to Greystone to get my third boost, which is booster, which is unbelievable because I live in Blessing, which is, it's literally the other side of the county, so I had to drive back an hour 
to Greystones rather than go five minutes up the road to Punchestown. Like, it's completely ridiculous system. I gave a rang and it was like, there has to be a, a mistake or something. They're like, no, no, Greystones. Like, it's like... <laughs> Oh man, I'm telling you, look, well, one thing we've learned over the last two years is that the people in charge in this country, oh, they just they don't have a totally, choice. totally enough. <laughs> it's fucking it. It's it. If it wasn't so fucking tragic, it'd be actually be comical. Do you know that? Yeah, Jesus Christ! Look at these fucking lads, and you see them there. You see, oh, fucking Bradker and Martin. Yeah, and like, like the, next, the latest quote from for one of the clowns, and it's like, all right, what what they're saying now? It's just. Yeah. A comedy routine. <laughs> yeah, what Terminator? What can I Terminator Predator Aliens or what the fuck am I going to fucking quote today? Like, oh Jesus, the the start of lockdown. The the random, the that we make ourselves. Random irony quotes. Like, oh my god, half of me thinks it's incredible. The other half is like, hold on a minute, what? This is a joke. <laughs> oh. oh, it is, it is, it is, but that. Uh... Sure is a joke, man, but uh, something else I was going to say to what ask you about tonight on this. Uh... Oh, yeah, man. Uh, when you were over in the UK, what did you think of the overall experience of everything being so fucking open in comparison to here? I thought it was great. They're, they're yeah. much better organized and everything is just... Uh, it just runs better. And I don't know if it's just the way they're doing it or the way we're mismanaging it or they're just doing it at a normal level and we're just really subpar or whatever way it is. But yeah, it was it was really um I thought it was brilliant even just going to the way even not even gigs, like we went to see Wicked on the Saturday, which was brilliant, and just the way it's organized and mm. um everything like that, it was just much better than here. It's just really kind of streamlined. They kind of know what they're doing a bit better over there. Very, very, that's for sure. That's for sure. And like, so, yeah. like some people are wearing masks, and but like nearly everybody wasn't wearing masks. And, you know, that's, I thought that was, that was grand. Like I was wearing a mask in most places, but so mm. were a good few other people as well. So like, you know, it could work really well. No, I just wanted to kind of touch on that because... It's very because when we go over, it's like it's so strange, isn't it? Like mm. when you go over there, it's just like I mean, nothing ever fucking happened. Yeah, and like <laughs> when you when just this, when we were on the plane home, like oh yeah, these fucking mask things, we have to put these back on now. Ah, <laughs> uh, but I think the masks are mandatory in the airports everywhere at this point. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty much, and and the tube and um, places where you're really kind of crammed yeah, in a bit. Yeah. Like of course, I wouldn't even think about not wearing one there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, you got over anyway, and you got to play a gig. And uh, I was, oh, so, you were lucky. I was, so gonna say that. I was gonna say to you, actually, you were lucky you've got your drum kit at home. Man, imagine if your drum kit was in a rehearsal space for two years and you're trying to get back into Oh, yeah, I oh, know no, it was there for a little while. We moved, moved back to parents' house for a little while for a few months, and I had the, the kit there originally where I was when I was when I had it when I was 14 in the same room again. So it was great. Uh, I, I moved it back home just before what lockdown number thirty three or whatever it was, the really long one. So I had it home. So I got to practice from basically the start of this year till summer, kind of nonstop. So that was, you know, that was great before we moved back to the practice room. Mm. So it's still in the practice room now. So if God forbid there's another lockdown, I'll just do the same kind of thing again. I'll bring it out. But you are very lucky though, because <clears throat> Very the power of drums and shit like that. It's it's handy enough. Like you can just even plug it into a ten watt amp and just practice yeah. it with headphones if you're in even a, an apartment or whatever. Yeah, sure. But you drums, are, all, drums are yeah, yeah. They're awkward, man. Yeah, awkward and heavy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and there's no way you could play it if you were like in the in an estate or anything like that. I was thankful that my old drums were in a you know, big house in the middle of middle of nowhere, so there was, you know, there was no kind of complaints. I'm very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, unless you have yours. electric drums, you're kind of fecked. <laughs> mm. Especially with your, your drumming and Svet Cant, it's fucking full on. Like, Yeah, it's kind of weird kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a lot of double pedal in it, like an awful lot of double pedal. Like. Yeah, a lot of double pedals, a lot of um, blast beats and stuff. Like, there's, um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of crazy sections and 
in the new stuff, the new EP. Uh, a lot of I think the, I think two of the ones are pretty long. I think they're ones about ten, ones eight, and I think the shortest one's about five and a half minutes. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of mix, a lot of the crazy stuff, a lot of um, weird patterns, and yeah. but then there's there's a lot of I still in a couple a couple four four kind of straight beats and mm. some of the bits to make it make really it kind of stand out between the two weird sections in between. So I'm really really happy how it turned out. I think it's I think it's one of the best things we've we've done so far. That's great to hear, and it's great to hear the band are progressing. And you didn't even Lido Leem left, who was a big part of the band for a long yeah, time. Of and course, yeah, Leem was a founding yeah. member, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, uh, he was in it since the start, twenty fourteen. 2015. Well, at the, since the start, that you know, Sandy started it in in Argentina and then came over here. It was a different, made up a new lineup. Mm. Well, yeah, he was at the at the start of the the new lineup. lineup I joined 2015, so the lads were already playing for guts of a year, kind of before me. Yeah, the like your your, your earlier stuff was good. Mm. But then the vintage and bias came out, man. That was like yeah, yeah. Rocket shit match. Yeah, I learned how to I learned how to play that album from start to finish in about uh two months. <laughs> Sandy came up to my house every day for about two and a half months as I right, here's the, the songs and we kinda of went out through through the entire album more or less in about two months and then just went in started in like early May and then August we went in to record it. So that was that was crazy. <laughs> that was almost every day from about nine to maybe two practicing like crazy just learning the whole album step by step because he had the whole thing kind of just done out done out on guitar and then we just went through through it and then yeah that was crazy crazy few months yeah well it would worked out though man because you, you got a lot of publicity out of that album it done you got a huge numbers on youtube like yeah yeah very huge what's the spotify numbers album? like oh i couldn't tell you um I don't know off the top of my head. I don't look the Spotify too much. Yeah. To be yeah. That's Santiago was saying uh, to that side of it more than that. Yeah, he's more the kind of um, the technical kind of mm. technical guy. Yeah, apparently he's very good on Instagram as well too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I could never I, fucking use Instagram. I, whenever you see like the odd the odd random meme on the page, it's usually me. <laughs> I, I'm the one that comes up with stupid memes. <laughs> now sometimes they go further though, don't they? Uh, yeah, you never know. You never know. It's a weird one. I was sure we'll knock on a bit of Svet Kant and who? One of your my one, one of my personal favorites, anyway. I know, of course, not. But that was the case. At least it's a bit of drumming in it, anyway, so it's not too bad. <laughs> Yeah. That's a, a favourite.
jazz section. Look at my son. Yeah. A little rev revocation he kind of interlude there. Feeling from Paul Bostock there. Yeah, guys, that's definitely a personal favorite. That and Persona. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that was really annoying. We had worked so long and had to get Persona uh, down to play it live because that is a really, really crazy song. It's like the longest on the album, and there's so many parts of it. And it's really, it's really digga 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 digga, real kind of double bassy. And it's probably one of my, probably my favorite song off the, off the album. And we had it in the work and state and we were just about to play it live i think it was one of the road to the iron mountain gigs yeah, yeah. we were just about to fucking play it live and then rona happened and then we didn't play a gig for nearly two years yeah, so there uh, one it was so annoying so we'll have to definitely work on that and get that in a working state now <laughs> yeah i remember when uh, that was your first single uh before the album got released and yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I'd heard your your stuff like and next thing I heard this and I was like, the fuck like Yeah, I think what that was fuck? one of the what the fuck where does this come out of like? <laughs> yeah, that was the first song of that was what I think that that one and the throne, the first song off the album were the, were the first ones uh, yeah. we worked on and really as a band. Because um because when I joined the band like that had you had the first first album, that was all done recorded yeah. for a couple of years before before I joined. So it was just a matter of what a year year, maybe two years of just learning. A few of them songs which are really crazy and that was a very very uphill kind of battle for me because um, i was used to just playing crash kind of stuff hmm. so learning all these different kind of things was quite difficult for me so uh so then we we started the, the second album and it was it was a real kind of big hard push to to get down these songs but when we did it was really really rewarding and and uh, they're just so fun to play live absolutely and <clears throat> Certainly a workout. 
Oh god, man! I, I I used to play the drums myself, and I was watching that there, man. And you were like fucking bringing the two feet yeah, going like feeling the, crazy. You're like, the what the? Therapy. F- how do you fuck do you do that? Like, uh, be having your brain in three different the time places, it's just blobbing. <laughs> fucking hell, man! Because people like if if you don't play the drums, like uh, you you got to you don't really truly understand how difficult playing double kick is. Like, yeah, yeah, doubles especially like. If, you're, if they're not kind of oiled or something and mm. it's usually you just have to get the, the kicks kind of the good kind of work and work in mm. order and then they do half the work for you so it's it looks like you're actually doing a lot more than you really are <laughs> that's probably that's the only way i can kind of describe it i know but i can i can probably now when you say it to me man i never oiled my fucking double bed pedals once back ah then. there you go you have to make it easier for yourself and then fuck's sake like yeah <laughs> Oh, look at man! I'm hopefully getting a, a shed up now next year where that I have been putting off. Oh, uh, brilliant! And I have drums. Hope, I'm hoping to get them back in there again. I won't get the full kit back in there again because mm. initially it was like an 18 piece. Oh, Jesus, yeah, nice. yeah, it was like fucking everywhere. But I, oh yeah, I, I still like to keep the three toms and the two floor toms, but just reduce oh, yeah. the cymbals down a bit, you know. And that's kind of what I did. I, I still have a lot of to- toms just kind of sitting in the corner. Just and now I just have a. Uh, Four four piece setup, but a couple a couple like a piccolo kind of one there and another floor tom on the side. But yeah. usually it's yeah, just the kind of standard setup. You know, I'm just too lazy now to set up the whole kit. It's like I'll do it tomorrow. I'll just set up the the seventeen toms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good job you didn't incorporate a lot of symbols into the, the recordings because then you'd be fucking nailing yourself to the cross. You'd have to bring all this everything. I mean, they, like, yeah, and I, I I did bring a good bit for the recording, so we kind of it's just a, a matter of. Kind of tweaking things for live. Well, I didn't add too much kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> Songs are fucking pretty crazy as it is, anyway. Man, the last yeah, thing you need yeah. is another ten symbols involved. Yeah. Like you, you don't want like a hundred um, <laughs> um kind of roll downs. Like that's going to be kind of hard to incorporate live. Yeah, the only the one man in Ireland that can pull that off is Tom Woodlock, though. Man, Jesus Christ, mm. like, mm. like his his work in the All Ireland Metal Project. Like, fucking what, a, what a crazy drummer he is, man. Mm. I definitely think in regards to Irish metal, like that, that guy is definitely in the, he's up, like you're, you're up there with yourself, like yourself and if you're other, like you're just. I would not I mean, put myself up there. I just. Oh, you I'm are, man. Jesus. I flub it up. Fucking, flub it up. That, that, your drumming on that album is fucking insane, man. Oh, thanks so much. It is. It really is. No, I call it fucking spade a spade, man, you know. Oh, cheers, cheers. Especially considering what happened to you and your he- your health and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Being able to play the drums like that is a fucking yeah. It was, uh, it was a it was a tough road, kind of back to playing after not being not playing drums for about two years and then get back into it slowly but surely. Yeah, it's a fucking like most people. If that happened to them, they'd just be lucky to be they'd be happy just to go about their day. Like they wouldn't be expecting yeah. to play the fucking drums to that level. Like. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't wasn't able to kind of sit in my laurels and kind of sit and do nothing for the rest of my life. I had to get straight back into it. Mm-hmm. I had I had the transplant about six or seven months before I started uh, looking for a new band. <laughs> yeah, the first thing I did when I got home from the hospital, I just sat sat with my kid. I was like, got a transplant like thirteen days ago. I had a little do a little uh, sterile. <laughs> Jesus, that's nuts. That's nuts. It's fucking nuts, like you know, it's like fair fucks, man, because that could have that could have really took the wind out of your sails, but no, no, yeah. if anything, it kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I was we're always gigging, I'm always uh thinking about how I how I was and how thankful I am to be back at it now. Yeah, that's great, and then now you've got the gigs under your under your under your wing again now, and yeah, one definitely for the UK next year. And you said you've got a hopefully a few more irons, yeah. a few fires, couple, and you're working couple, on uh, a couple of things in the pipeline. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Obviously, I wouldn't expect you to talk about them on here, but it's because it's, you can't in case something changes or gets back exactly, yeah. here. Yeah. We're living in so much hopefully, uncertainty. Hopefully now. not. Hopefully everything's gonna just go full steam ahead now. From in all regards of everything, all gigs and. Yeah, everything else. I think things will just tip away nicely now and come now and the beginning of next year, say February onwards, it's going to be fucking yeah. back to normal. Like, oh, I really yeah. hope so. Really hope so. <laughs> ah, it will, man. It will. Like, uh, what can we do? As I said to you, we said earlier, like, you know, unfortunately, this is what we have to live with now. And yeah, it's a shame, man. It's 
I feel so. I said it to the last podcast. It's terrible. The people are dying. Like it's like ten people yeah. are dying a day at the minute, or something like mm. that. It's fucked up. Like, and but sure, you know, at the end of the day, like, what, what can we do? Like, we just can't yeah, close just down the to, world. Like, can we? You know, take yeah, you can't stop the world anymore. You have to keep going. With, you know, take your own precautions and wear mm. masks and wash your hands and stuff like that. Exactly. That's that's people what, making no, it that's such a big point. deal about having to wash your hands. Like you should be washing your hands anyway. Exactly. Sake. Like when I was always, always had a bottle of hand sanitizer before this was yeah. a thing. It's working. With yeah, yeah. Money exactly. Working sure. Like it's funny people wear masks and stuff. I was like, I did this anyway. Like first one of the first things I did when I left hospital after transplant was I had to wear a mask anywhere in public because oh, yeah, the immune system was so low and stuff. Yeah. So, this is completely normal to me. <laughs> Exactly, I know. Yeah. It was nice to play video games for a while and watch films. Oh, and yeah. Do all yeah. those things that we'd ever yeah, have to do. You feel kind of guilty, but there's a tiny part of you that's just like, oh, this is great now. I, sit, I can just <laughs> sit in and do, do absolutely nothing and feel guilt free and just play games and watch movies and stuff. Little, little tiny guilty part, guilty part of me. Yeah. And I don't have to fucking pretend I'm busy tonight if anyone calls me, yeah. you know? Yeah. You want to call down? Oh, no, no, Jesus, I can't. I'm awful busy. Doing what? Yeah. Oh. Well, no, we're in lockdown. I can't come down tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, man. Look, and cheers for coming on. And yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thanks so much for, for inviting us. No matter, man. And shame Santiago couldn't come on, but sure, what can you do? Uh, we can we can Photoshop him in today. Exactly. In exactly. <laughs> we'll just put him there with his big, one of his fucking big smiley heads on. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, nice, man. 100%. Great. Thanks so much, Phil. No matter. Cheers. Come on. Cool. Chat to you Bye. soon.